Greetings! With me now is mortal scribe Violet Milan, a frequent contributor to my peerless magazine. Tell me, Violet, tell me of your characters, because it may defy belief, but there are some who have not yet read my magazine and discovered your wondrous stories. First, an honor, or as always, to be in your presence. Yes, of course. As hard as it is for me to believe that there are people out there who are not already massive fans of your wonderful magazine, I will nevertheless answer your question. Uh, yes. My sword and sorcery characters are called uh, Dylan Wolfshead and Parno Lionsmane, and they are my version of Fritz Leiber's Fawford in the Grey Monster. Uh, I, to the point where you don't know how to pronounce the name Dylan unless you're told exactly the same way with the name as with the name Fawford. So they are mercenaries, but they're mercenaries uh, with a twist because they're kind of a mix of the musketeers and the samurai. You know, the, the mercenaries in this particular world are, they have a very, very strict code that they're perfectly willing to die for. I have observed and, Or to kill table. someone else, yes. you know. Yes. And how long have you been writing tales of Dylan and Barno? Ooh. I'd have to say going on to do 15 years. I see. Probably 15 years. Tell the readers I started about the novels. The, oh, sorry. The novels. Yes, there are at least three of which I am aware. There, there are four. I have to think four. for it. <laughs> there is one I do not know of. Oh, oh sorry. yes. Excellent. Tell the viewers about the world through which these characters travel. I wanted to do something because I knew or I hoped that there were going to be a lot of novels and a lot of short stories. So I wanted to have a firm grip myself on what the world was. So essentially what I did from the geographical point of view was I turned our world upside down. So that Dylan, for example, is not a northern bar barbarian, you know, from the wastes and the snows that are to the north. She's a southern barbarian from the wastes and the snows to the south. So if you're reading carefully, uh, you can figure out exactly what country it is I've turned upside down. And if you want to see, you know, where the main uh, cities are and the, you know, the traveling routes and stuff. And as I say, this was really just uh, something to make it a little simpler for me but it has turned out to be a lot of fun. Yes, it is quite entertaining. And tell the viewers what it is that drew you to write Sword and Sorcery. I think I've already mentioned Fritz Leiber. The first Fritz Leiber, uh, the first Fawford in the Grey Mouser story I read was like a revelation to me. I had read a lot of science fiction, a lot of fantasy up until that point. Uh, but this was something that just had that little extra something. And I've, since then, of course, I've thought about it. And what it seems to me that there's a couple of factors. I've often said that uh, fantasy writing in general and sword and sorcery in particular is, uh, or they, these, this is one of the few genres left where you can actually have people who act heroically or honorably uh, without any irony being intended. Yes, I, irony I, tires me, yes. Pray, continue. I often think of the sword and sorcery hero or protagonist, perhaps is the better word, as somehow equivalent to the uh, hard-boiled detective or the noir detective that uh, they may not uh, have great ethics according to, you know, our world standards, but they, they don't think of themselves as being above reproach, but they are certainly more to be trusted 
and more to be depended on than the society around them. I think that is well said. Only I am above reproach. <laughs> true, so true. Yes. Now, tell me, what rituals do you begin before you start your writing day? First, I meditate on the glory that is the skull. Of course, of course. This feeds me with enough energy to work hard and get the story written. Wonderful. I don't know what I would do without you. Excellent, and how soon shall you have another tale to present to me? I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks, I am just finishing a draft of a novel that uh, unfortunately doesn't concern uh, Dylan and Parno. Uh, but as soon as I hand that in, I will have time to flesh out what I think might be a very interesting idea. Glorious news! I shall await this day. Now, tell the viewers what you like best about my magazine. I love the illustrations. That is my first, because you know, the cover is the first thing you see. Yes. And yes. then I like to just have a quick thumb through to look at the illustrations and see if I can figure out what's happening in the story from the illustrations. That part always interests me. And then of course, I get in, I start with the first story and I read all the way through. I like the letters, but the stories are important. Yes, yes, you're, it is true. The artists are high upon my last to be immolated list. I am glad to hear that. Ah, well, thank you for your time and your talent, Violet. This interview oh. is at an end. Farewell.